Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. My guest today is Danny Taylor. She is a natural bodybuilding figure champion, multi times, actually, <laughs> the co founder of Vegan Proteins, co manager of the Vegan Strong Team, and also co founder of Team Plant Built, which is the largest team of vegan strength athletes in the world. It's a beautiful thing. I've had the chance to hang out with many of them on that team. And um, she's also as a judge at um, a sponsored event that we did, um, which is the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship. And we hope to have another one in 2021 pandemic permitting. Danny grew up in a very unhealthy household and turned her life around. She was at one time uh, 210 pounds in high school. So after going vegan for ethical reasons and discovering a love for weightlifting, she lost 90 pounds, turned her health around, and eventually went on to win multiple natural figure championships. Since then, she has become a certified strength coach and conditioning coach and has coached over a thousand other vegans to help them on their own bodybuilding journeys. Welcome, Danny. Pleasure Thanks to have you. Me. It's always so weird to hear something read about you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. And you and I have been friends for a while. And um, I was reckoning back to the days when uh, I first connected with Giacomo way back in 2013. But I'm trying to think of when that connection with you actually first happened. Probably the very first plant built event, yes. I think. Yes. So uh, Giacomo back then it was definitely more like in the front lines of everything. And I was a very behind the scenes person. So I don't think we actually connected until the whole group actually met up in 2013. But it's funny how that has changed where Giacomo and I were both very much in the front. <laughs> so going back to the beginning, speaking of the beginnings, going back, um, you've been vegan for how many years now? I'm, I just started my 19th year. So I think my eight, wow. I don't know the exact day, but it was in October. Um, 18 years. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations on your recent vegan anniversary that <laughs> and 19 years. Well, the next one's going to be a milestone. So, but still, you know, being vegan for 35 years myself, you and I have both seen a lot of changes, but I want to talk about the very first changes that happened to you back then, 19 years ago and, and where you were at emotionally, psychologically, socially, that what happened in your life that triggered such a, a significant change, especially 19 years ago when this wasn't in its full blown popularity and awareness back then? Yeah, so I was 16 years old and I was already vegetarian. So I was already lacto avo vegetarian. So I ate dairy and eggs still um, and a lot. <laughs> I ate them a lot. <laughs> um, so I think part of the idea that you can't be like vegetarian, I mean, you can be vegan and overweight. You can absolutely be vegetarian and overweight. That didn't make me any healthier, but I had never even heard of a vegan. I didn't know any vegans. <laughs> and I was actually just writing a paper for an English class about vegetarianism. That's how I stumbled across this concept of mm. veganism. And I was vegetarian for ethical reasons. So when I found out about how the dairy and egg industry were essentially just feeders to the meat industry. Mm. I said, I don't want to be a part of any of this. And I went vegan overnight. I had no knowledge of nutrition whatsoever. My parents cried when I told them that I was going to be vegan. They actually cried because they thought I was going to die. Um, fear, and I, fear base. Yeah. 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 And I mean, if you don't know, then you don't know. Right. right. So, I ate a pretty terrible vegan diet, but it was vegan. It was like bagels and French fries and Coke and, <laughs> you know, stuff 16 year olds eat a lot of, yeah. but I actually started losing weight, even eating that crappy. I, I just started losing weight, but it was the first time in my life that it occurred to me that, you know, this wasn't like my fate, my fate wasn't, this wasn't my genetics that was making me. Uh, the size that I was, which I always thought that because many people in my family are on the larger side. So I just assumed like they are, I will be, oh, well, we will live on. But it was the first time I realized that 
I actually had more control over the situation than I thought that I did. And that was what triggered me to start learning about nutrition and start taking that into my own hands. And over the next few years, I learned a lot and I ended up losing 90 pounds in total. But I, I, I never was in a place where I like, you know, a lot of people go on diets in the first place because they like, they hate themselves. They, they're, so un- I never felt like that. So I wasn't like, oh, I used to hate myself and now I love myself. It was just this change happened and it had a profound impact on me that I didn't even expect. And, and I talk about this in some of my um, uh, talks that I see uh, two kind of different classes of vegans, uh, outside in vegans and inside out vegans. Uh, those who make the change from within inside and are usually a ethical change, which is I just don't want to do that and then start to realize the physical changes. And then those who do it from the outside are influenced by, hey, wait, you know, I'm trying to do this to actually make a change to my physical self to try to change it from the outside in. You sound more like the the the, <laughs> the primer. One hundred percent. I mean, I was even, when my parents were like so worried for me. I started to be like, well, am I going to die? Like, <laughs> you know, I had no idea the health benefits that I that were in store for me. I had no idea. I didn't even care at that point. I was 16. I didn't care. But then they started happening and I realized like how powerful it was and like, hey, maybe there's more to this and I should learn more about it. And and, and I love that. And because my father was a, a professor at the university level, my mom was a psychologist. So, you know, I have multiple PhDs, but my families were PhDs or masters all throughout a kid's life. And then of course, all the kids that we played with were kids of parents so they were all high iq you know people and of course when i made the change it was a heart space change right i changed because no this is i I just don't want to participate for my own sense of depression and the suffering that i felt i would never want to cause suffering to another being once that light bulb connected for me but i got all this intellectual questioning that i'm like okay i know it's right here yes there's got to be reasons for it right here i'm still finding to this day studies that are showing why a vegan diet is actually or a plant-based diet is better than that still to this day (laughs) now that there's so many more of us that are able to make better studies on you know people who are vegan people who have been vegan for 30 plus years like you exist now, you know, years, <laughs> exactly. they, there weren't groups of people like this. No, and the, and the research never looked at it before, never looked, included it. It was a standard American diet was the accepted norm. And that was what they used in research. And, and I get it. You want to use what most of the people are consuming, not the outliers. And obviously, you know, back when I was vegan, I think I remember reading the stat, it was 0.03% of the population was vegan. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't know a single person who was vegan when I when I went vegan. It was me. And me either. I didn't <laughs> either. And now it's crazy because I feel like all of my friends are vegan. Yes. And and my mom, my mom, the one who cried. Congratulations. And That's my cool. sister vegan like most of my family is now too um because they saw how much it changed my life you know and also you know i think a lot of people feel really strongly about the ethics of it i think a lot of people who aren't vegan or vegetarian do feel strongly they know it's they know that they don't like it they know that it's not right they don't want to support it but there's a lot there's a lack of knowledge and um there's a fear of the unknown and they're just too afraid to take those steps um, and then they do it and maybe they don't do it as well as they could have. And they're like, oh, see, this is terrible. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> right. You know? or, or, or they do it nutritionally without understanding the better choices to make within the food system. And that's true with uh, switching to any diet or any lifestyle. Mm-hmm. If you if you are not comfortable in it, if you do not understand it, if you do not feel sure about what you're doing, it, it can it can be difficult to make the change, and even more difficult to stay with the change. As we've seen, you know, many bandwagoners, especially in the celebrity movement, high profile people jump on board, and um, and then find you know social elements are, are are challenging or whatever, and then give it up and for various different excuses and reasons. But you know, obviously, it's I think there's 
like an anchor that comes with being an ethical vegan that you don't get as a uh, a vegan who's more concerned about personal health because you can always be unconcerned about personal health it's kind of hard to be unconcerned about you know that sense of feeling it's just like you you don't change your mind about rape once you realize the horrors of it you know right right and i have had this conversation with people because i've said on a few occasions like there's no such thing as an ex-vegan because if, if you're not, then you never were. Right? right. And I know that that kind of rubs some people the wrong way. And I get that. But I do think that it is important to differentiate between a plant based dieter, which is great. That's wonderful. Right. But it's just it's a different motivation. Yes. And, yeah. you know, it's when you hold those ethics so dear to like, who you are, it's like a pillar of who you are, it almost feels insulting for other people to just toss the word around based on what they're eating, I guess. It's true. Now, you know, it's 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 great when if you do have that anchor. And look, I applaud everybody in making whatever changes you can. Mm -hmm. Small changes, big changes, ethical changes, environmental change, whatever your reasons are, the changes are positive. And the changes have positive effects, uh, not only on our own personal health, obviously the animals, but also the environment. And there's so many different aspects, our economy, our tax base, our healthcare system. Uh, you know, it just goes down the list of this ripple effect once you make those changes in, in your life and affecting positively other people too as well. One of the exciting things that I felt, um, you know, when I had that, it was an emotional slash spiritual breakthrough moment. It was an absolute change for me, a lifetime change. It was one and done. That was like, okay, that is who I am. I'm not going to ever, this is not something I ever have to think about again. I do have to think about now, how do I put this into practice? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's a different thing. Uh, how do I make some changes in, in my social structure, who my friends are, what movies I see, what books I read? Uh, you know, all of these elements had to change too as well, not just my diet. But one thing I saw pretty immediately is was the health impact started to really rapidly change. And I'm like, oh, my God. Now, I had gone through a very personal change where going from suicidal depression to having a eureka breakthrough moment where my whole worldview changed. That was not the common route that most people enter a lifestyle change. Right. But for me that shifted my emotional state and my mental state in such positive state. And then when I started experiencing what the diet was doing for my elevated mood, you know, we now know that consuming a, a high fiber based diet actually feeds the microbiome, which produces the actual serotonin that our brain uses to keep us happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, this is an intuitive level. I almost feel like when I chose to be happy, my brain redirected me to say, okay, well, then you need to make these choices so that you support that happiness in your life. And that is dietary and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And that just fascinated me. I was, a, uh, I was in the science field in college. So I was a bio psych major. So I was looking at how the total body physio physiology uh, affected mood and behavior. And it was so exciting to see those changes within myself. It was like, yes, it's an in one study because that's all we had back then. <laughs> there weren't studies on vegan, so I had to do it myself. But, you know, how, talk about your changes, those experiences when you started getting physical changes and how that led you to working out and led you to finally getting on stage and showing people what you could accomplish. On that yeah. Yeah. So the most obvious change to all of the people that I knew growing up, obviously, was that I had lost a lot of weight. You know, they, in fact, I, I still live in the small town that I grew up in. And one of the coolest things about it is uh, when I go places, people don't recognize me. And it's great because <laughs> I get to like, I, I don't have to interact with people if I don't want to because they don't recognize me from high school. It's kind of funny. Um, so that's all I noticed at first. But then over the years, it started to dawn on me that as a kid, I had chronic ear infections, chronic strep throat. Like I can't tell you the number of times that I had to take antibiotics as a kid for ear infections, for strep throat, and no word of a lie, I have not had a single ear infection or strep throat even once since then. Now, I'm not saying you can't 
ever get sick as a vegan. Certainly I've had colds and flus here, here and there, but these, these infections that were based in like, you know, going into the winter, we would just pass these things around ear infections from all this phlegm that we just kept like re inhaling, not once it never happened again. And that was a huge, huge change for me. Um, so I was always kind of like a sickly kid and now I'm not, you know, and it's, it's just crazy to me how, how much just giving up dairy and eggs at that point changed that for me. It was wild. I also was diagnosed at 16 years old with polycystic ovarian syndrome and endometriosis. So those are female reproductive diseases. Um, and I remember it was, it was just after, like literally like the month after I went vegan, I had an appointment and they said I had polycystic ovarian syndrome and they recommended to me that I follow at the time the Atkins diet. Um, remember when that was really popular uh, <laughs> because carbs, because they thought that PCOS had a lot to do with insulin resistance. And that if I ate carbs, it was going to make the polycystic ovarian syndrome worse. And it was going to cause weight gain, make losing weight harder. Infertility was going to be very likely. And I didn't do any of that. I completely ignored their advice because I was like, well, I'm vegan and I don't know anything about nutrition at this point. So I'm just going to keep eating this way. And I was able to lose weight, which they said I wasn't going to be able to do. Um, my sister has the same exact conditions and they told her she would never have kids. She was 374 pounds when she went vegan. Wow. And not only did she lose 200 pounds, but she has two happy, healthy kids after they said she never would. <laughs> so it's not just how it's changed my life. It's how it's changed the people yeah. around me's lives yeah. as well. And, uh, it's just, and it also like you, it was a huge mental shift for me. I mean, in, in high school, I, you know, I was such a slacker and I was always off doing something I shouldn't have been doing. I was basically on a like fast track to nothing and nowhere. And, you know, just like a mopey teenage kid. And now it, I just, it felt like it gave me some kind of a purpose. It, it put me in line so much more so with the way that I wanted to be living. And then I was able to carry that over into other areas of my life. So yes, I felt a huge mental shift as well um, to the point that almost 20 years later, I still say, you know, that was the best decision I ever made in my life. And I can't believe that I made it at 16 years old and it had such a huge impact on everything from there on out. Um, but as for working out, what happened <laughs> was I had lost all this weight and I was at what I had in my mind as a goal weight, right? I thought, oh, if I'm 5'7", I wanna be 130 pounds. Awesome. So I got to 130 pounds and I was like, well, that doesn't look like what I thought it was going to look like at all. Um, so I decided to start exercising. Uh, shocking. What a, what a concept. But I would just go get on the elliptical. I thought, oh, well, clearly I'm just not fit enough. I just need to get on the elliptical. But I could see over the little wall, I could see women weight training. And I was like, that's it. That's, that's the look that I want. They know something I don't know. So I hired a personal trainer and she was wonderful and she taught me how to lift and I'm grateful for her to this day. But when it came to diet, she was like, I literally can't help you if you won't even have whey protein powder or if you won't even just have egg whites. Like she was trying to convince me to just, just have just a little bit, like I can't help you without it. And that it frustrated me so much because here I was willing to do like whatever it takes. And she was basically telling me it was impossible and I just wasn't having that. So I took to my computer and started researching and trying to find other people that had figured this out. Like there has to be someone that's figured this out. And I found veganbodybuilding.com, which was Robert Cheeks. Well, it is still Robert Cheeks website, but it was a forum. So were thousands, there was like 3000 people, active members in there posting what they were doing, what they were eating. And we were all just kind of learning from each other at that point. You know, if something worked for somebody else, maybe I would try it. It's also where I met Giacomo. <laughs> so yeah. And that was in 2007 and it's history from there. That's a big jump to go from slacker to standing on the stage and winning a figure championship. That, that doesn't sound like the same person. 
<laughs> it's it's I swear it's true. If you totaled up all of my absences in high school, I missed an entire year. <laughs> but I still graduated in the top 10% of my class. So I was always bright. I just didn't, I wasn't gonna show up. I wasn't gonna do anything. So I was yeah. that my love of actually learning, because I always really did enjoy learning. And mm -hmm. I just nerded out on all this nutrition stuff. And um, eventually people were asking me questions in this forum. And that, you know, it that's literally, it just evolved and evolved and evolved until I actually became a coach for other people, which I did before I ever stepped on the stage. Mm -hmm. I coached other people to get on stage before I ever got on stage because I just didn't think I could do it which is kind of funny now. But. I, I love that when people can take a frustration in your life, when listening to wow. you talk about that coach who was both a very powerful motivator in your life, someone who inspired you, but at the same time, someone who frustrated you with their dogma and their limited thinking, um, that, that that kind of, do you feel like that really inspired you to become the coach and be that for other people as kind of a, Pay it forward. So that was part of it. Since then, I have had other coaches um, who were not good, who were really, really not. This woman was a wonderful person. She just didn't right. have the knowledge. I have had other coaches that they don't care. They don't care if, right. they, if they hurt you. They don't care if they give you bad advice. Um, and that really is what has inspired me mm -hmm. more than anything to be the best coach that I can be for other people is because now I know this industry inside and out, and there are a lot of people who do not have their clients' best interests at heart. They have, they want a, a killer before and after picture, and then see you later. Like that's that's kind of it, and it it, it makes me sad, and it, it does it you know hurts people short term and long term. Mm -hmm. So that is a big motivator for me to this day. But yes, initially it was definitely um, spite. Spike was the motivator <laughs> to start. Well, out. <laughs> and, and I, I know I used to, I worked in the sports nutrition with some of the top players in the sports nutrition field, and I saw what they were doing. And I used to come home and complain about it to, to my wife, Vanessa. And she would say, Stop complaining about it and do something about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, God, yeah, when you have that light bulb moment where it's like, All right, you know, there's a lot of stuff that could be done better out there but use that as a motivation for you to go out and do that yourself and you know fortunately i've made a lifestyle a living out of out of that and you have too so applause to that but it should be a powerful lesson and motivator to people that you can take the frustrations that you get in life and turn them into empowerment turn them into you bringing that to the people in the way that brings you the most integrity and 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 makes you feel good about giving something better of better value to people out there and really really truly helping for for those of you out there and I know a lot of you especially um, in the plant-based movement do really truly honestly deeply care about other people other people's health other people's well-being and that's why we're in this you know mm -hmm. um, so, you go from winning competitions and you're thinking at that point, okay, I've won, taken first place several times. Mm -hmm. Where do you go from here? Mm -hmm. And how did that involve your shift and your growth into things like vegan strong and vegan proteins and plant built? Well, honestly, it all, it all stems back to that. You know, I was very lucky that my first introduction into the vegan fitness community was Robert's forum because it felt like friends, you know, it was just pre Facebook. I think MySpace existed, but it wasn't on MySpace. It was just, it was just, you would have to go there to chat with other people. And it had a very strong community feeling. So ever since then, Jocko and I have always really wanted to kind of keep that feeling alive, basically. And vegan proteins actually went, we were a supplement shop. <laughs> That's what we were initially, was a supplement shop. <laughs> and um, that started as a fundraiser uh, for a documentary that never came to be. But when we shut the fundraiser down, people said, no, no, I can't find vegan protein powder anywhere else. Can you please keep selling this? 
So we started that, but you know, running a store, it was wonderful, but it doesn't have a community feeling to just run a store. Although we definitely tried to give it a community feeling. <laughs> it did. So Giacomo started plant built, which, you know, was a vegan. I mean, it still exists. It's just not active right now. Um, which is a vegan team of strength athletes that competes together, which, you know, is one of the most magical experiences of my entire life was it's just, it's surreal to meet up with, uh, you know, 40 or 50 other people from all over the world that you've never met. Maybe you've never even talked to before, but you just feel like you've known each other for so long. It's so, so cool. Um, the friends. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you recreated that exact same feeling with the vegan bodybuilding show. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was a very, very similar feeling. And I feel like as veganism becomes more popular, which of course we're, I'm thrilled about, like I'll never be not happy about that, but it loses a little bit of that community feeling. So we do wanna keep that going, but also because there's so many people who are new to the plant-based movement, and like we just talked about, if you don't, if you don't do it right, pretty quickly on, you're much more likely to abandon the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We want to educate people, help yeah. them along that journey so that they are less likely um, to fall off. We want them to be successful. We want them to feel great. We want them to tell their friends. <laughs> like, um, so that's what Vegan Strong did pre-pandemic was we would go to the Olympia and the Arnold and all these huge shows and talk to people who were not even remotely vegan or natural for that matter right, right. and talk to them about adopting a more plant-based diet. And shockingly people were, people were surprisingly open to the idea that they needed to move down the plant-based spectrum a little bit more. It was really, it's, it's really cool. But now with the pandemic, we can't do that anymore. So we have to try to find another way of outreach. So now we're doing these monthly boxes where we send a box of vegan goodies to people's houses. It's, it feels like vegan proteins supplement store 2.0 is what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's part of the adapting to, to the current structure. I'm, you know, I know one-on-one -on -one coaching was probably one of the most popular in-person coaching. And now the vast majority of uh, coaching is is done online uh, mm -hmm. zooms <laughs> boomed in popularity because of that yeah uh, and and it makes sense um people still want to keep in shape and look in especially in this period of pandemic uh we you know we know that staying fit has a lot to do with increasing your chances of survival mm -hmm. um, when confronted with uh, bacteria and viruses and pathogens. So yeah, we want to, people really want to, you know, it's funny, I thought, okay, you know, we're a, a fitness brand, right? Fitness supplementation, you know, we're gonna see some fall off because the gyms are closing and all this stuff. Our sales have up 300%, so it's, it's amazing. But I mean, we're different than uh, just your typical sports nutrition company in that our products promote health as much as they do uh, overall fitness. So um, I think that's what a little, a lot more people are, are getting into. I want to do this the healthy way. Yeah. And, and, and so when people come to you in your practice and in your coaching and they say, how do I do this? I know some people are thinking, okay, get me there as quick as possible, right? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and, and, you know, I want to see results in two weeks. And, and that's not how it happens. How, has, how have you found working with people, especially women? Um, and I don't mean that in any specific way, but the gender pressures for women, I think in modern day society, especially in America, are different than for men, for sure. How have women coming to you, especially in dealing with that, with the emotional tie-in, the social pressure, especially in the age of social media, where everything is image is so far. I mean, advertising and stuff and television used to take that, but social media has taken that to a whole nother level. And and how have you deal with that? And in, in, in what are some of the things that challenges that you help people overcome in a healthy and positive way? Yeah. So, so I'm kind of, I guess, lucky you could say, cause I started doing online coaching in 2012. <laughs> um, so when the pandemic happened, I mean, we'd been doing this for so, so long at this point. Um, 
but there was a lot of stuff that I learned early on that has changed significantly since then. Um, with women now, so I think, I think this is true across everybody really, but most of my clients are women. Um, social media has absolutely destroyed people's concept of what is possible, the time frame in which it's possible. It's taken this idea of the celebrity, like the unattainable celebrity status and made it so anybody with the right editing tools can be that. So then suddenly you think, you know, your neighbor looks like Kim Kardashian when it was like really just edited in a certain way or held in a certain light. And we like to think that we are savvy enough to recognize these things and say, well, it's not going to affect me. Like I know it's airbrushed. I know this, but it does. It does affect people. And um, with the rise of bodybuilding becoming more popular, which again, I like, I love bodybuilding, but it's not for everybody. And it's certainly not the healthiest sport that's out there. And because it's become more accessible to people, everybody wants to do a bodybuilding show. Or my favorite thing that I hear is I want to look like a bodybuilder, but not compete. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is like, that's, that's not really a thing. Like if you're going to, you don't put yourself through that to not step on stage. Right. <laughs> um, but it's super common. I hear women say it all the time. I don't actually want to compete, but I want to look like a bikini competitor. And I'm like, every bikini competitor wants to look like a bikini competitor all year, but most of them don't. Right. Um, so uh, for me, it comes down to a lot of really hard, honest conversations. We talk about the goals. We talk about what's possible. Um, we talk about possible timeframes because sometimes you can achieve a goal pretty quickly and some people's bodies just respond super well and can get there faster than somebody else's. And then somebody else, it could just be like pulling teeth. You know, they're doing everything right. You just have to stay the course, which most people get really frustrated when they're not seeing the results they want and they quit. So a huge part of my coaching is being like, don't quit. Like you're doing it. If you just stick with this, it's going to work. It has to work. It's physics. You don't defy the laws of physics. I promise this is going to work eventually. And, uh, and it, of course it does, but you know, it can be very frustrating when you feel like you're putting in all of this work and the results are coming so slowly for you, but then you click open your phone and you just see everybody else's highlight reel of success and you just start thinking, well, what's wrong with me? What's, right. what's wrong with me? When there's nothing wrong with you, um, you're being fed a very specific feed of specific things to make you feel a specific way. And I guarantee you, and I know this because I have the incredible position of getting to speak to so many women in so many different positions, so many different parts of the world, stages of life. Everybody has a struggle. Everybody has some struggle and yours might be different than the next person's, but everybody is working really hard on something that they feel like it's not coming fast enough. And you just have to get out of your own head and just keep moving forward and you will get there eventually. And I think that's such a true statement. I know one of the phrases that I've seen you use is getting in our own way. Mm -hmm. right? And um, it's so much when when people want, OK, just show me the exercise and show me the diet. What should I eat? What should I take and what should I work out? And it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. It is about mindset. It is about healthy habits. It's about really entrenching yourself in a surrounding that supports that to maintain it. There's so much more than just do this workout, eat this and take this supplement. And this is what you're going to get. That's not how it works. <laughs> and, and I'm so glad that, you know, when I read your posts and you cut through the BS, <laughs> all the dogma all the bro science all the oh just do this and you get this is and you know it's okay no that is not how it and and look you know for those one or two percent you know genetic freaks out there that actually may be how it works but that's one or two percent and understand that's one or two percent you know that is not the 98 percent out there for the vast majority of people I, you know, myself included you know people say oh you must have been born with that arms and then, you know, 17 inch arms. And I'm like, 
No, it took me 15 <laughs> years to get that of intense, painful training. <laughs> Don't be born with it. Come mm -hmm. on, it's insulting. I hear that too. When people say like, oh, you're just so lucky to have those genetics. I I'm just like, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but no, people do get in their own way and they get hung up on the details that don't even remotely matter until you get the big pieces in order. When I have somebody asking me if they should or shouldn't be taking an L-carnitine supplement and I can't even get them to like go for a daily walk, we're having the wrong conversation. <laughs> you know, if you if you can't eat some vegetables, there's no magic supplement that's just going to like get you where you want to be. So I find that, you know, if there's a pyramid of things that are important, the pieces down here, people just want to skip right over them and get to the fun stuff. They want to get to the supplements and the meal timing. And like, that's fun. And it's really helpful when all this is in order. When all of this, you don't even have to think about it. And you just, you get good sleep. You have a positive mindset. You can exercise without like, you know, skipping every other day or you're eating all right. Then we can start talking about, okay, how should we split up your protein throughout the day? And, and what supplements are going to be the most beneficial to you? But if you can't do those other things, you're just wasting your time. And a lot of times people do that. They, they, they pour over research and forums and Facebook groups looking for these minute details and they'll spend hours doing it when they could have just gotten in a workout and been further ahead than if they had done that. So, so true and so important. And, you know, when I, I hear people about, you know, what's my macro split and, uh, oh, uh, you know, no oil, no gluten, no this, no that. No, Look, all of those can be helpful, but the vast majority of people fall somewhere in the middle. And it's just about getting in the gym, e eating responsibly, trying to make the base of your diet whole food plant based. You're going to get results that way. Mm -hmm. and consistency so my my three big things are intensity you got to put the work in mm -hmm. um and, and intensity also is not talking about just the diet but the workout too as well and your your focus and intensity to committing to accomplishing something so intensity um consistency if you're not consistent your body is going to respond look our body is a, an amazing adaptation machine it adapts to whatever we're doing. Yep. It doesn't grow muscle if you're not challenging it. It it adds weight if you're putting in too many calories. It adapts to what we do. So when they say, oh, I do this and I get fat. No, you get fat because you're in excess of calories exactly. and because you're not using exercise or other forms to, to utilize, properly utilize this calories. It's not, it's not out there. You got to start with this. So um, and nutrient density. Look, our this amazingly beautiful, clean machine that we are born into works just like any other machine properly when you put the proper things into it. If you put grade B oil into your gas tank, it's going to gum it up and it's going to clog and it's going to stop. It's the same thing with our human body. We have nutritional needs, micro and macro nutritional needs gotta fit them you gotta stay with them so i figure if people can just stay with those three things you know intensity um consistency and nutrient density you'll have such a head start on everybody else and if you can get those down to habit style like that's what i do every day sure you know hanging out with friends you have a birthday cake slice with a big deal it's not it's what you do 80 to 90 percent of the time that is going to show your results the body understands every once in a while, we're going to get hardships. Snow's going to fall, grasses are going to be a, you know, nutrients aren't going to be as available. Our body's great at responding to those uh, adaptations. Mm -hmm. What we need to do, though, is set good habits and then have a good surrounding like a coach, like yourself, or a, or a group or a group of people like societies, like, you know, veganbodybuilding.com. Thank you, Robert Cheek. You were amazing at setting up that. And now there's lots of great uh, sites out there, communities out there for support. Get yourself into that community of support. So that's why I believe in coaching and love what you're doing so so much too. But there is good coaching and and other than good coaching. <laughs> there is. I just say do your research. Just do your research as much as possible. Somebody can look like a million bucks, but that doesn't mean that they know 
anything or that they know how to coach somebody who isn't them also. So you know, if you're about to fork over your hard earned cash to somebody to help you ask them questions, ask them questions before you do so talk to their clients, that sort of thing. Just keep yourself safe. And I, I like all good coaches, I think a good coach in my mind um, helps people to better themselves. When, when I hear coaches say, oh, this worked for me, <laughs> red flag. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm not you. We are physically two different human beings. Yeah. I have a different chemistry, a different uh, blood level of, of hormones. I have a different thyroid. I have, you know, all of these different things, different stressors in my life that you do not have. This is not who, different genetics. I was born with a, a whole different set of body. And yeah. so to say this works for me, it should work for you. If you ever hear that from a coach, run. Yeah. Totally. And you're right. Like a coach should help you not just look better, but feel better and, and yeah. live better. In my opinion, if yeah. some, if, if a coach is just giving you a set of macros and a training program, then it's, that's not, to me, that's not coaching. That's a glorified macro calculator, you know, like uh, to me, that's, it's, it's a part of it. it. Like it's an important part of it, but you know, uh, knowing what your macros should be, isn't going to help you if you're, struggling with binge eating at the end of the night doesn't matter what those numbers are you know you got to work on the other stuff again work on the other stuff before you you know see the big details so there's a nice question from uh raymond deckert um so i'm a 79 year old male i do walk jog rebound and ride a bike for aerobics but no weightlifting is weightlifting something that you would recommend especially since i am getting weaker and this is a great question. Um, I'm 57 years of age myself, but as we age, we generally deal with some uh, strength loss and, and muscle loss too as well. I think that can be um, slowed and even in some cases almost stopped with proper nutrition and exercise. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. So I think that I wouldn't think of it so much as weight training at 79 years old, especially if you're just getting started, I would think of it more as resistance training. Great. So resistance training could be body weight squats to a chair and right. doing that every day or push ups against a wall or a countertop. Or if you're able to get a set of exercise bands, you know, that's not technically dumbbell weight, but there's a lot of resistance there. And you can you can do quite a bit with it. The key I would say at 79 years old would be to not don't don't start with too much. Don't don't go too hard too fast. You're going to be so sore. You're going to hate it, and you're never going to want to do it again. So less is more. And your body, like Jeff just said, it will adapt. Even yeah. at 79 years old, it will still adapt. It sounds like you're already um, very active, so it will probably adapt pretty quickly too. I, I agree. Uh, there are some nutritional considerations that you might look. Most of the research is saying that as we age, we can just like insulin resistance, if you are uh, putting in uh, stimulating insulin too much, uh, we can have uh, what is called anabolic resistance too as well, um, where people have eaten protein uh, probably too heavily in their whole diet or, and our body becomes resistant to that. Um, so what most of the research is showing that is uh, you, you'll probably need to increase your intake of protein. Um, as, a, as you age, you're going to be generally in a different body weight or for most people in a different body weight. So uh, you got to adjust that too as well. And again, working with a coach to help you get to the right amount of protein levels to um, uh, help assist with that. And, and Danny, I know you've worked a lot with protein, uh, <laughs> yep. especially in the plant-based community. And, um, and there, you know, definitely start with the workouts first and then really start to, to help your body in uh, recovery and building that strength up by, by hitting some nutrient requirements that will change as you age, especially as we get into our uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. I would say creatine also. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Jeff? Agreed, totally. 
And lots of published human research behind both. Um, great studies on protein intake. And, uh, and listen, I know some people say, oh, protein intake can be dangerous. No, the research is showing that it's, it's animal protein that is actually dangerous. The same study will show that the same amount of high protein, if it's plant-based, had really no negative impacts and, and usually generally positive impacts because when you're consuming more plant protein, you're by nature, <laughs> by process of elimination, consuming less of the animal products that have the cholesterol and creating TMAO and all these other host of negative effects on, on the body. So it's not high protein that's the issue, it's high animal protein that's the issue. So, um, and, and most of the research bears that out. Even, even the doctors out there, like one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Garth Davis, who writes about the dangers of protein does recognize that yes, even those elderly, if you're uh, uh, especially uh, plant-based, uh, consuming higher amounts of protein to get you and make sure you save strength. Because one of the things that elderly people do have to be concerned with is um, losing strength to the point they fall. Hip fractures are one of the leading causes of death in nursing homes today uh, because of the complications that come with that. So that's definitely you want to keep your strength up through all the way through um, end of life so that you can maintain your overall health and prevent early, um, early dying. Yeah. And to the point about, you know, falling and, and breaking something, resistance training helps increase bone density. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you could increase your bone density starting at 79 years old, but to anybody else watching this, it's a great reason to start for anybody. Um, to help with your bone density, resistance training helps you forever. Yeah, and look, you can pick up a pair of bands, uh, a good pair of bands for 30 bucks on Amazon. There's really no excuse and you can do it from home. It's, it hooks right up to a door, any door jam, you just close the door on it and start going away and start light and work your way up into it. Um, do, you know, two weeks at a lightweight and then do two weeks more at a, a little bit heavier and then just, well, not weight, but resistance. They have different strength of resistance bands. So, Great stuff. But so if people are interested in in your services, yours or and or Danny, I know you guys kind of work as a team, too, as well. Um, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find out more about you, get some more information, what websites to go to and stuff like that? So everything can be found at veganproteins.com. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. We have a podcast called Muscles by Brussels Radio. Uh, so that's like our free informational content that's out there. But as in terms of our programs, we just released a few weeks ago um, a 28-day like jumpstart program. So if in 2020, if you fell off the wagon like many, many people did, and we're just struggling to get back at it. This is a very affordable 28-day program that is very much what we talked about today, strength training, habit-based nutrition training, focusing on the big building blocks. Um, and it's very easy to digest. Like it's an easy program to digest. So that's a really great starting place. But we also have a coaching application on there. If you want to fill that out, you can chat with Giacomo and we could see if we would be a good fit for each other. And and look, this is for any level. If you're um, you know, just starting out this, any age, they can adjust them to your to your needs, uh, all the way up to um pro who really want to fine tune your posing or your, you know, um, your stage presence, um, uh, learning, there's always things to learn. And I know Giacomo, Danny, both myself included, love learning constantly. Every day I'm learning more about nutrition and I love it. And Which I is love crazy because you already know so much. Jeff knows more about supplementation in his little finger than <laughs> I have learned in my entire career. So, and I always tell people that if you have supplement questions, Jeff <laughs> is the one to ask. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be born uh, from high IQ parents, and I'm glad that I get to put it to something that I, really matters to me and really get to pay it forward. So it's 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 an honor. It's funny, like, you know, when people say, oh, you're wrong about this, and they show me research, I thank them. Mm -hmm. You know, I know well, that's not apropos on social media. You're supposed to get, uh, you know, delete block, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I love being wrong because it means I have new and better information that I can share with people to say, no, I was wrong about this. This is better information. I love that. Yeah, so, and that's so important. If somebody's not willing, and this is for a, a coach, for anybody that you're looking for help from, if they're not willing to say either I don't know right. or I, I was wrong, like that's a huge red flag. Yeah. Okay. I, so um, uh, what's up with um, Vegan Strong? Where I know you've had to pivot a little bit for this. Yeah. Um, what about the future? Where are we, where are we so sitting? So when events are able to happen again, we are still hoping to go out to events. I mean, I know some of the events are happening. Like I think Olympia Expo is still happening, but it's, we just don't think it's safe to be there. It's not the, not the example that we want to set either. So we're going to wait till it's like really safe to go back. But in the meantime... Um, we are doing these monthly boxes. So it's not a subscription, but we do send out a box each month to you and it's $49.99 with free shipping to the US only. Um, and it is full of 150 plus dollars worth of vegan snacks, bars, drinks, protein powders, various supplements, coupons. Like it is just jam packed and I'm the one packing them and shipping them out. And I can't tell you what's in November because it's a surprise, but we made them last night and holy crap, they are intense. They are really intense. And Vegan Strong is not for profit. So we're not like making money off of this or anything. It's just to help fund our uh, education and teaching more people about plant-based living. Well, thank you and and uh giacomo both and robert out there if you're listening hey robert he's done so much for this community and continues to um thank you for all you're doing i'm i'm gonna leak this out right now but we're we've just got involved with a, a group called uh food for life global um we will be donating uh two plant-based meals for every purchase of clean green protein going forward we're going to be launching that next month so that's awesome yeah we're the first uh first uh protein powder to uh be um giving two plant-based meals strictly vegan meals to children who are nutritionally void and um, needy. So really exciting now, every single one. We'll have a counter right on our website and give back. So I love what you're doing in your education with Vegan Strong, with your group support and with one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and really giving people the straight and supportive information that I think people really want and are, are needing, especially in a world where commercial and profits can come first in so many minds. It's mm -hmm. it's great to be part of a community that is taking joy in serving others and helping others. So thank yeah. you for all you do. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for all you do too. You're a huge part of this community as well. So we appreciate you. Thanks, stay tuned. We've got some great new uh, Facebook Lives coming up, some special guests, including the one I talked to. Uh, we'll have the founder of Food for Life Global, which has fed over 60 million vegan plant-based meals to needy children all around the world and almost every major country across the world. So excited to be a part of that and launch that in December. If you're watching this episode later, obviously these timeframes are gonna be a little off, but I hope you enjoy the content. Danny's a wealth of information. Please do reach out to her. Uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you is through the vegan protein site? Uh, they can just email if they want veganproteins at gmail.com. That's the most direct way. Easy peasy. We'll put that down in the uh, bottom of the links uh, for people in the comment section so that you can uh, find that. Thank you, Danny. It's great to see you. It's too long. We got to do it this. It has one. been too long. It was good to see you. <laughs> Say hi to Vanessa yes. for me. Will do. Take care.